Hello everybody and welcome back. So here we're going to hopefully finish up this first exercise in module 14. So we've filled out all of this output. We've got everything for our estimated regression equation. Now we can use it. So remember when we talk about regression, we talk about two reasons for doing regression analysis. One is to understand the nature of the relationship which in the last video we went through all of that, we calculated the coefficients, we interpreted those coefficients, we calculated the intervals for them, and we interpreted those intervals. We understand the nature of the relationship. Now, we're gonna use our estimated regression equation for the purpose of prediction. And so, what does that mean? Well, I understand how these two variables are related to one another. I have our estimated, regression equation, negative 5.38 plus 18.19. We know what that 18.19 means, right? That's the marginal effect. Now, if I input some value of interest into that independent variable, well, now I can predict a point estimate for the average value of y that corresponds with that value of my independent variable. So if we come back here, I'm going to use the estimated regression equation to develop an interval estimate for the average grade of somebody who studies five hours. So that is my value of interest in the independent variable, five hours. So what can I do with that? Well, let's clean up a little bit of space here. Because let's think back about just what it is that we've done. We have a point estimate of the relationship between grade and hours spent studying. We have a negative intercept here. This was negative 5.38. We have a slope, 18.19. Now I can use this to now determine a point estimate of the average grade given some value of interest in my independent variable. So the problem said, you know, what about somebody who studies five hours? So here this is asking us first for a confidence interval, but let's build up to that. Because before I can do an interval, I need a point estimate. So if somebody studies five hours, so there's my value of interest in my independent variable. Well, if I input that into my estimated regression equation, 5.38 negative plus 18.19 times 5, well, that tells me my estimate of the average grade for somebody who studies 5 hours per week is 85.57, right? That's my point estimate of that average. This is that y hat. That's my point estimate of the expected value of y, given that value for my independent variable. So that's a point estimate. The question is asking us for an interval estimate. So where does that come from? Well, remember this red line that I've drawn, that is giving us the point estimate of the relationship between grade and time spent studying. We know that there exists some uncertainty in that point estimate, right? These are those point estimates. But here we can see with those intervals, well, you know, there's my point estimate, but I'm 95% confident it's actually somewhere between these two values, both the intercept and the slope. So what might that look like? Well, if that red line gives us a point estimate of the relationship, what if my slope or my marginal effect, what if it's closer maybe to that lower end of the interval? Well, if it's closer to the lower end of the interval, maybe the actual relationship is somewhere like this. Or what if the slope is actually closer to the upper end of that interval? Well, maybe it looks something like this. So where the red line gives me my point estimate of the relationship, 
those blue lines give me some idea of the uncertainty that exists in my estimate of that relationship. Maybe it's something like this, maybe it's something like this. And so now we can hopefully see more clearly that although this is my point estimate of y, given that point estimate of the relationship, well, what if this better describes that relationship? What if this better describes that relationship? Or what if it's somewhere in between? So here I can see how the uncertainty that we have in our point estimates of the intercept and the slope, the uncertainty that we have in those estimates feeds into the uncertainty that we have in that predicted value. I have a point estimate of that predicted value, but I have some uncertainty about that point estimate that is derived from the uncertainty that I have in my slope and intercept estimates. So what we're going to do here, as the problem says, we have our point estimate. Now we're going to obtain a confidence interval estimate for the average grade of someone who studies five hours. Well, okay, what does that calculation look like? Well, it's not too dissimilar from what you've seen before. Let me just clean up some space for myself here. It's still going to be a point estimate plus or minus some margin of error. Our point estimate here is denoted y hat star because that's a predicted value at a specific value of interest of our independent variable. That's what the little star is. Plus or minus some critical t. This is the same critical t that we've used for our other intervals with n minus k degrees of freedom times the standard error of that, oops, of that point estimate. So we need to know how to calculate that standard error of the point estimate and that's where it's a little bit tedious. That standard error is obtained using the standard error of the regression multiplied by the square root of 1 over the sample size plus here we have the difference between our level of interest in the independent variable minus the sample mean squared divided by something we've actually seen before, the sum of these squared deviations. So we already have all of these pieces. If you don't have all of these pieces, well then it can be a little bit tedious to calculate, but we have pretty well everything here. We have the standard error of the regression S. That's coming back up here. This is that 10.7 that we calculated oh so long ago. So we have 10.7. 1 over n, well that's our sample size, that was 1 over 5. Plus, here we have now the difference between our level of interest, which was 5 hours, minus the sample mean, so that five hours, that was this five hours here, that level of interest in the independent variable, and our mean, 3.66. That is squared. And then this piece that's in the denominator, that some of those squared deviations within our independent variable well, if I come way up here, look at that. Remember, it was in the denominator of our slope coefficient. So there it is there, 3.932. Thankfully, we already have that. We don't need to recalculate that again, 3.932. 
So what is this going to be? I'm going to work this out in pieces because I don't want to make any silly mistakes. So 5 minus 3.66 squared divided by 3.932 plus 1 over 5. I'm going to square root all of that. And I'm going to multiply that by 10.7. That gives me that standard error of that predicted value of 8.67. So now I can come back up here and I can fill in our calculation for that confidence interval. Our point estimate, y hat, well we have that point estimate here that was 85.57. So 85.57 plus or minus that critical t, it's the same critical t that we used for our previous intervals when we were performing intervals for the slope. Here we have still three degrees of freedom because it always corresponds with our estimate of the variance, which was MSE. And if we come back up here, just as a reminder, MSE, three degrees of freedom. So this is three degrees of freedom and if we do 95% interval, this is 0.025. So that's going to be the same critical T that we used for these intervals. 3.182, as we still have circled here, 3.182. So there's 3.182 times that standard error that we just calculated, 8.67. So here's my confidence interval. I have a point estimate of 85.57. Let's get that upper limit. 85.57 plus 3.182 times 8.67, 113.16. 15 85.57 minus 3.182 times 8.67, 57.98. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Because we already had a lot of the calculations done for us from previous parts of this problem. So how do you interpret that? Thinking about what that point estimate is, right? So if a student studies for five hours, my point estimate of their grade is 85.5%. So if you study for five hours, the average grade is 85.57%. Uh, I'm 95% confident that if you study for five hours, the average grade will be between, if I round it, 58 and, wow, 113%. So that's my confidence interval estimate for that predicted value. Okay, point estimate. Study for five hours, the average grade is 85.6%. Confidence interval, I'm 95% confident that the average grade of those who study for five hours is between 58 and 113%. Okay, that's it. We finally have wrapped up this problem. You can see there is a lot to be done in regression problems. Now, I am making these problems as thorough as possible because your instructor can ask a lot of different types of problems. Hopefully you won't come across anything quite as exhaustive as this one, but this one covers pretty well everything that you might come across. We still have a couple of more examples, so we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Thank you guys for watching. I know these Module 14 videos are tedious, but they are hopefully going to be helpful in working through the many, many calculations that you might encounter. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.